welcome to another episode of Doki Doki Precure. And it's episode 5, aka Makoto slash Cure Sword episode. This is mostly about her daily, everyday life as a uh, popular idol, which I've never seen an idol Precure, so this is kind of new. Kind of new for me. And let's get right into it. The episode starts with Alice kind of having a tea with Mana and Rick out, outside, and just kind of enjoying the afternoon together. And because last week Alice kind of revealed that she might know who Cure Sword's identity really is. And I know everyone at home or watching this is probably going, well, duh, it's a purple haired girl, come on, put two and two together, girls. Think about it. <laughs> but they don't really do that in this universe, so. And uh, while they're having tea, Alice kind of reveals a few things that she knew that Makoto and her manager entered the uh, Tokyo Tower, not Tokyo Tower, Clover Tower. The first, in the very first episode, but she noticed they did not leave the tower because I guess they have cameras all over the place in that tower. So you know, it makes no sense how someone enters the building but never leaves. So they kind of figured that out. And Sebastian, uh, Alice's butler, is like he pulls out this little little tablet thing, and he's I don't know where he got it from, but he finds uh, fingerprints. Uh, shoe size, DNA from hair, which I don't know how I got that, and a, a bunch of other things that he figures out the identity could be Cure Sword. And I'm like, what did he get? This from like CSI or something? Like, seriously. What the, hell, what the hell can this butler do? What can he, can't he do? This is amazing. And uh, so, how are they going to get to meet her? Well, Alice happens to, you know, be in a family that owns a lot of this stuff around here. And her family owns the Yotsuba TV, which I learned from a few friends that Yotsuba is equals Clover, so there you go, Clover Tower. And that's Alice's last name. So, yeah, her dad owns this TV, TV studio, and she kind of walks in there like, you know, they everyone knows her. And, and I guess at the time, Makoto's kind of filming this idol, I guess, TV show where they have all these different idols and they got competitions like that. And during all of that, Mana's kind of like in awe, just watching M Makoto, like, you know, wow, she's so cool. And, but I guess Mana kind of has a thing for her, like, likes her music and stuff like that. They don't really <laughs> come out and say full blown, oh, Yuri, because this is, again, a kid's show, so. But everyone else, even me included, we will ship these people all together all the time. I'm, I'm pretty sure not these two, but. They'll get some kind of ship out of this. Maybe Alice and Makoto, or <laughs> or Rika and and, and Makoto. You know, either way. But while that's filming, and Makoto kind of walks off stage because she, she needs a break, so Mana and the Alice and Rika kind of sit there and they try to think of a plan. But while Mana and uh, while the other two kind of figure something out, Mana kind of runs, sneaks off. And sneaks into the dressing room for Makoto, and she walks in and she's like, "Hey, I'm Cure Sword. What's up? How you doing?" And Al <laughs> Makoto's kind of looking at her like, "What? Like, I don't understand. How'd you get in here?" So stuff, stuff like that. I just thought it was kind of random how she introduces herself as the, her Precure self. So it's like it'd be like Sailor Moon walking in the room, like I'm Sailor Moon. Hey, how to me? How, how nice to meet you. <laughs> it was just kind of out there and kind of random for me, but I guess Mana's not the type of person to hide things, which we learned she can't really keep a secret at all <laughs> from anyone. And she kind of expects Makoto to be like, oh, like happy and happy to see her or anything, but Makoto's kind of like, uh, what are you doing here? Can you please leave? I guess she gets to the point where she gets annoyed and just asks her to leave. And she, she leaves with the other girls. They're kind of sitting in like this side room. And Makoto's manager kind of walks out and is like, you know, like, I don't know what's wrong. I mean, I don't know why she's acting this way. I'm sorry, Makoto's the way she is, but she has a busy schedule and everything like that. And they kind of hint, I think, I mean, they hint at it later, but they kind of confirm it later, but that Makoto's manager obviously is her little fairy that follows her around. And they've done this before in other precure where the fairies can transform into human, like, people. I know they there. Yes, five is probably the best example. I haven't seen it, but I've seen screenshots and I've seen the first episode. So 
and they have a mascot in that one. It's like he starts off as a human form, and the one of the main characters meets him, and he he kind of turns into like a, a little fairy later, or in the same episode. But anyway, uh, yeah, Mana. I guess she feels bad that she, what she did. She's like, I felt bad that I just kind of forced my way into her dressing room and didn't knock and all this stuff like that. And after talking to the manager, the manager kind of looks at her and like, you know, you're you're just like Makoto in certain ways. You know, Makoto, she's his idol, so she puts 110% or even more into her singing and dancing because it's important to her. And the manager's kind of like, you know, well, what's what's important to you? I mean, and she's kind of, and I guess Mana realizes that they all are all kind of the same, that she puts all her effort in to, to make people's lives happy, you know, easy. Because she's a student club president, a student council president, sorry, and other things like that, so they kind of are the same in, in how much, I guess, because they heart they put into the their a- everyday lives. But while that goes on, I have the Monster of the Week, which is brought brought by uh, Marano, or, yeah, that's what, Marmo, yeah, Marmo. She's basically there, in on this in the studio, and she happens to hear a rival idol of Makoto's kind of like, you know, like she's watching her Makoto dance. She's like, man, I can do better. She's better than me. All all this other stuff, the selfish stuff that they have always been doing so far, and she just kind of plays on that, like whispers in the girl's ear, you know, like you could be better or something, something along the lines of that, and it makes the heart come out, and she. Uses it and she makes this giant uh, star. <laughs> that was pretty pretty random and pretty funny. But before that, we had the glasses guy and Ira kind of talking. Ira's just like, man, there's another precure and it's like there's four of them now. So he's, and he's talking to the glasses guy and the glasses dude's kind of just laying there. He's like, I'll help out when there's a thousand precure. Like he's not worried at all that <laughs> if there's more precure popping up. <laughs> it's kind of funny how he's like, eh, wake me when there's a thousand. He doesn't care. So it makes you wonder how powerful is that guy, and is maybe is he the real boss? Obviously not, because there's probably a bigger boss out there somewhere. But anyway, back to the star. The star kind of uses blinding light, like light attacks. It's kind of kind of weird, but it works though. And it fits the theme of a the, the star. So, and why it blinds you? It spins in the air and hits you and knocks you around. And I guess you could consider it like a like a like blades or whatever you want. And uh. Eventually, it it, it it almost attacks uh, Makoto and um, Cure Heart, or jumps in the way, stops it, and she's like, "Oh, I got this!" And Makoto's kind of like, "Why'd you do that?" Just little things like that, and you can tell she just she's aggravated with the whole thing. But she kind of sneaks off and comes back, and guess who's there? Cure Sword, and it's like she can't really deny that she's not Cure Sword at this point. I mean, you can see that. I mean, it's, she ran. The other one was missing, so oh, the other girl popped up. Oh no! But yeah, sword shows up, basically kicks the, kicks ass, beats the hell out of the star, and purifies it. And then she kind of like stands there and like gets ready to walk off, and she doesn't really say much, but she just kind of walks off in the shadow, and that's it. And that kind of ends the the big boss fight of the week. And you have Maramu where she runs off the usual. And, uh, yeah. After that, they had, they have Mana, Alice, and Rika kind of sitting in the Mana's shop, the, their dad's shop, and they're kind of all, she's kind of depressed because she never got the chance to apologize to Makoto for what she did. But while they're sitting there, this letter comes through, like, the, the their door, and she picks it up, and it's from someone named, uh, I think DB is the name on the letter. And... I guess it's an invitation to like a, a fan, a fan meet and greet, and Makoto kind of is standing there and talking to different fans of hers. Eventually, Mana kind of walks up, and I guess it, she has this little moment with with Makoto. She's kind of like, I guess they're having this little chat, and she's like, you know, me and you're kind of the same. I know what I want to have to do now, and Makoto's kind of like. What? What do you mean? She's like, I like my thing to do is make people happy, you know, protect them to smiles and things like that. The usual precure, magical girl stuff here. And she kind of gives her some a bag of food from her shop and kind of walks off. And I like, those two kind of kind of make up, but eventually I don't 
eventually I know Sora will come around and join them, but until then, she's kind of doing her own thing right now. And it, like I said, you can obviously tell that the manager is the blue fa little pink, not pink, little purple fairy, because there's like a little, like a silhouette of like a fairy after the letters passed under the door. Just moments before she goes to the, the meet and greet, so. But anyway, interesting episode, you know, not a lot going on. Was, they had the idol stuff, you had the monster, the big star, and you had, this is, was the first, I guess, team fight for the, the main three girls, but even as a team, they kind of got their, their butts whooped. They weren't really communicating or doing a whole lot, so. But this, it's as expected, I and mean, they, they just became pretty clear, maybe like a few days ago, so I mean, you gotta wait till they get that t team dynamic on down pack. And next week with episode 6, uh, Makoto visits Mana's dad's shop to, to film a cooking show, so she'd be there cooking, and I guess she's she's super terrible at it. They had a scene where you're supposed to wash vegetables, you know, like we, you know what people do when you use water. She's using like dish detergent, it's like soap and stuff like that, and things like that, and she's messing everything up, and she's, you can tell, and she guess yeah, she's gonna crack these eggs in the preview, and she has like six eggs, three in each hand, she kind of crushes them, I think, and just gets out all over her hand, just kind of like, wow, this girl can, cannot, she can dance and sing, but she cannot cook. I assume there's more episodes of uh, the manager kind of trying to get Makoto to, I guess, go out in the world and make friends. And eventually, you know, see eye to eye and join the Freaker. I mean, they are on the same team, but you would, you would think they're would help each other, but I know she's just gonna do her own thing for a bit. Anyway, that's been the episode.